Hi guys, it's Kino. Welcome to another video. So today's pick a card reading is going to be messages and predictions for your month of July 2024. We're going to start off with the general overview of your month where we look at the main themes and the main energies that you will be working with this month. Then we're going to get into the specific areas of your life. So we're going to look at predictions for your love life and relationships, your career and studies, and your spiritual and personal growth. There are three readings for you guys to choose from today. I'm going to show you each of these crystals up close one by one and please pick whichever one you feel drawn to the most. Number one is fluorite. Number two is green onyx. And number three is mukite jasper. Okay, so as always, take all the time you need to pick. You can pause the video if you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with number one. Hi, number ones. So if you guys chose the fluorite, this is going to be your reading. We are gonna start off with the general overview of your month where we look at the main themes and the main energies that you'll be working with, as well as significant events or changes coming your way. And to do that, we're gonna be looking at these oracle cards. So let's get into it. Your first oracle card is Tides with the number 34, and we have the keyword Cycles. So I would say that for my group number ones, a main theme for you this month is change. Things are going to be changing this month. And more specifically, it seems like you're kind of entering into a new season of your life. Just as there are four seasons here on earth and just as the moon has different phases that it cycles through, we have the cycle of seasons in our life and it feels like in July you are moving into a new one. So for example, if things have been really busy and fast paced in your life, you could be moving into a new season where things are more slow and things are more still or vice versa. If things have been really stagnant in your life, you could be moving into a new season where things are picking up for you. And this could also be something that's going on internally. So if you have been for example, feeling not very inspired, low energy, low motivation. Um, you could be entering into a new season where you do have a lot of energy, you're wanting to work on a lot of things or create a lot of things and vice versa. If you have been really productive and really inspired, that energy could be slowing down as you move into this new season. Of course, this is a general reading and I think that everyone watching is going to be at different points in their energetic cycles, but I think you're going to feel a significant shift in your internal energy this month or perhaps in the circumstances around you. So change, change, shifting seasons, shifting energy. That is a major theme for the month of July. We also have the purple dragon. So purple could be a lucky color for you, which is interesting because you guys chose the purple crystal. So having purple crystals around you or um, wearing the color purple, that could bring you good luck this month. And oh my gosh, I just noticed this says accepting change or embracing change. So it's literally the same message again. Change is coming and you are being encouraged to embrace it. And yeah, I think that's something that your spiritual team wants you to know because maybe some of you will be in resistance to these changes. But just as no season on earth can last forever, like no spring lasts forever, no summer lasts forever, no full moon lasts forever, um, seasons of your life will also not last forever. And that is a good thing. They shouldn't. They should fluctuate. We should stay moving. So... For those of you who are in resistance to change, this might be a bit of a challenging month, but if you are wanting and embracing change, I think that this will be a great month for you. I also think it's interesting that this is card number 10 because 10 is the number of the Wheel of Fortune in tarot, which is also about change and how like change is the only constant and change is inevitable. Like if you're going up on the wheel, it's only a matter of time until you're going down. And if you're going down on the wheel, it's only a matter of time until 
you're going up and you will be most happy and most fulfilled if you can embrace all of your seasons. So your productive seasons, your slow seasons, your introverted reflective seasons, your social outgoing seasons, like they all have their purpose and they're all beautiful. So embracing change is gonna help you have the best month possible. We have the second house and we have Taurus here and um, the planet Venus. I just saw 420 <laughs> on the camera timer, which could be relevant for some of you. And actually, I think if your birthday is 420, you could be a Taurus. But anyway, Taurus people, people with Taurus placements could be significant to you this month. Um, with the planet Venus here, if you know your Venus sign, people with uh, the same placements of your Venus sign could be significant. So for example, my Venus is in Pisces. So if this is my reading, then Pisces people or people with Pisces placements could be significant. So anyone who has like the same signs as your Venus sign. Um, we have the keywords material goods, money, values, security, work ethic, income, expenses, career, possessions, budgeting, assets, financial stability, and personal finances. So there could be a change in your financial situation in the month of July. There could be unexpected in uh, money coming in. There could be unexpected money coming out. So it's just something to be aware of. There could be changes in your career as well. For those of you who have been thinking of changing jobs, I think the energy is favorable for that this month and this is perhaps a confirmation that you will be finding a new job this month. Um, or there could be a change in your shifts, in your working hours, like you're randomly getting a lot more shifts than usual or randomly getting a lot less shifts than usual. You could be in a job where your income is not the same every month or if you resonate with getting a new job, you could be entering into a job like that where it's not like a fixed salary every month. And I feel like for many of you, your income this month could be significantly different than the average. And for some of you, it's gonna be significantly more. For some of you, it could be less. But I think the point that your spiritual team wants you to remember is just that this isn't going to last forever. It's just like a little blip that's happening this month. So for those of you who do end up making uh, more than usual, I think there's a piece of advice here to not spend it all and to make sure that you hold on to some for savings or for taxes, whatever it might be. Um, because it might not be this way forever. And then same thing, if you make less than usual, your spiritual team also wants you to know this isn't gonna become a regular thing. It's just one month where things were a little bit weird. And so don't worry about it. With work ethic here, I also feel like you could notice um, an unusual shift in your productivity levels and in your motivation levels, which should also be embraced and accepted while it lasts and recognize that that's just temporary. And then we have escape with Mars in Pisces. Oh, there's, it's funny. I used myself as an example, like people with Pisces placements could be significant. So maybe they are, maybe Pisces people are significant for this group. Um, and people who have, if you know your Mars sign, people who have the same sign as your Mars sign could also be significant. Um, we have the numbers 10 and 12. So these could be important dates of the month, the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th of the month. Something important could be happening. I actually think for many of you, you are getting extra money than usual this month, just randomly. Like, so if you're self-employed, maybe you're just randomly having a really good month. Something sells really well. You're getting a lot of traffic and it's, it's unusual, like it's welcome, don't get me wrong, but it's like, it's not normal to get this much coming in or maybe you're just getting, a, you're picking up a lot of extra shifts and so you're making extra money because this coin is making me think that. And also the fact that Mars in Pisces, that's the placement of the 10 of cups, which is a really, really happy card. So 
I do think for most of you, as long as you embrace these changes, you're going to be really happy. Like if you just lean into them and allow them to come, you're going to be really happy. Escape is making me think of travel just because we have this is this a chariot? I don't know. <laughs> but I feel like you guys could be going on a trip. Like maybe you're getting this extra money and then you're using it to go on a trip or you're with escape, you could be using it to take a vacation. Um, for those of you who do have extra money coming in, this could also be a little bit of a heads up, like hold on to this money because pretty soon you're going to want to take a trip and you'll be glad. You'll be glad that you have these savings to do it. So let's take a look at our tea leaf cards to see anything else that you should know about this month, specific events, things to look forward to, things to look out for, or just any other messages from your guides. We have Seahorse with Family Matters. We have Bo, you are highly thought of. Okay, right away these two cards together is making me think that your family is proud of you. Or maybe there's a particular family member who is quite proud of you. Oh, look, and then we have Kite with vacation. Mm-hmm. Vacation confirmed. That's so cool. I feel like I'll pull a card and say a message, and then the next card that comes out confirms that. Look, we have the message of change twice. We have the message of random extra money coming in twice. And we have the message of vacation twice. I wonder if some of you are in resistance. You could be having extra money coming in and you're in resistance to treating yourself to something. Or you're in resistance to taking a vacation because you feel like it's a waste of time or you feel like you should be doing something more productive or you're worried that you're going to fall behind. So it's like, if you, if you're in resistance to the restful energy, then you're going to have a horrible vacation. But if you embrace the restful energy, you're going to have an awesome vacation. Kind of what your spiritual team is saying is that the, the seasons are changing no matter what. And so it's really a matter of, are you going to resist the change or are you going to embrace it? And if you embrace it, you're going to have an awesome time. Some of you may also worry what people think of you. If you like embrace a more slow energy or embrace rest or even you're worried what, how you will judge yourself, like worried what your inner critic will say. Um, which it's so easy for me to say this, but don't <laughs> like you, you deserve the things that are coming to you. Some of you could be going on a family vacation as well, or taking a vacation from family. I don't know, general reading. Um, so this concludes the general overview part of the reading. So we're going to get into the specific areas of your life now. As you can see, I have one tarot card and one oracle card each for your love life and relationships, your career and studies, and your spiritual and personal growth. So let's start off with your love life and relationships. For your tarot card, we have the two of wands. For your oracle card, we have victim. These are both chakra decks that I'm using today. And so we have the sacral chakra and the heart chakra coming through. And this is making me think that you guys have maybe a strong link between your heart and your gut. So when something is like when your heart is happy, when something feels emotionally good for you, you may feel it in your gut. Like you may literally feel it in your lower abdomen. So with matters of the heart, you might want to pay attention like to how your gut is feeling. Does it feel expansive? Does it feel contracting? Does it feel excited? Does it feel painful? I feel like your gut holds a lot of answers for matters of your heart. And the two of wands, it definitely has a feeling of we have options, we have paths to choose. So this could be a month where you're kind of, 
There could be a specific relationship that you are making a decision about, or just in general, you're in an energy of taking stock of your relationships, your partnerships, your connections, and really asking yourself, like, how does this person make me feel? How do I feel when I'm around this person? Do I feel at ease? Do I feel like I'm becoming better? Um, does this relationship make me feel smaller? Does this relationship put me on edge? Um, and really, I don't know, there's something ev evaluatory, if that's a word, <laughs> like you're evaluating your partnerships and really asking yourself if this is good for you, if this is in alignment with you. And there's something about really tuning in with your gut and how you feel in your gut about the relationships in your life. Um, for those of you who are single and looking for a romantic partner, you could have multiple people who are interested in you. You could have multiple people approaching you, asking you out, demonstrating their interest. There's a feeling of independence and empowerment with the two of wands. So feeling like, yeah, like you're not at, at the mercy of who is surrounding you. I feel like you're stepping out of a victim mentality or a powerless mentality and stepping into this independent and empowered mentality. So for example, if someone makes me feel like crap about myself or if a certain connection is not making me feel good, I have the power to change that by either um, asserting myself to that person, um, making my needs known, or I can walk away or distance myself from that connection. I don't just have to be powerless to the type of treatment that I, I'm receiving and I don't just have to be quiet and wait for someone to change or wait for someone to read my mind. Like I can speak out. This is Mars energy. It's also Aries energy. So it's like taking initiative and empowering yourself to have the type of relationships that you want. Some of you could also be especially for those of you who are single, I feel like you could be thinking about the traits that you want in a partner and then becoming that yourself. Like you are becoming the person that you want. You are becoming the person that you most admire. It's like you're really taking charge in your relationships and the type of relationships that you will hold space for in your life and feeling really good about that. And no longer allowing no longer allowing your space and your energy to be filled with anything that makes you feel bad about yourself like we're just not even gonna entertain that we're not gonna allow that anymore we're not gonna be in this passive energy of just yeah we're not gonna be in this passive energy anymore um some of you could be Finding yourself in like a mediator role this month as well. I feel like these are two people in your life or two parties in your life who are at odds in some way and you're kind of stuck in the middle helping them figure things out. This could be like at work, it could be in your family. It could be between two friends, but yeah, you might be like the mediator or the peacemaker, or like trying to help them see eye to eye. Um, you might find yourself in that kind of role. Does that mean you have to do it? No, some of you might want to do that, but just based on this energy, if you're not feeling it, remember that you are not powerless to that. You don't have to be stuck in this beef or you don't have to be stuck mediating for these two people or two parties if you don't want to. I think a main theme in your relationships is that I don't have to accept things that make me feel like shit. And maybe it's been hard until now to like put an end to things that make you not feel good or it's been hard to speak up when you need your needs met but you are shifting into this very empowered energy this month and you're going to start to feel a lot more like light in your relationships like a weight is lifted because you know that if anything if anything feels heavy if anything is is not making you feel good you 
can speak up or you can distance yourself or you have the power to change that. Okay, so now let's take a look at your career and studies. For your tarot card, we have the sun. I love to see that. And for your oracle card, we have balance. Interesting. So both of these are third eye cards. They're matching. Again, I really feel like this energy is pointing towards vacation. There's that there's that chariot again <laughs> in the background. Um, this energy is pointing towards play, pleasure, creativity. This is Leo energy. So like all things Leo, it's leisure, having fun, um, hobbies, passions. This balance I feel like is really talking about work-life balance, but I feel like for this group, the tides are shifting and it's time it's time to have more life <laughs> it's time to have more life than work in the pie chart that is your life i feel like your spiritual team is kind of saying that for a long time work or thinking about work has taken up a bit too much of that and your spiritual team really wants to see you in a more playful and light-hearted energy if you have been like in a workaholic energy or keeping yourself on a very rigid schedule or saying like oh i like i can have fun but not for too long because then i have to get back to being productive i feel like that has really killed your creativity not killed actually because your creativity is not dead it's always there but it has it stifled it has stifled your creativity and there's something that this month you're going to feel called to work on or that you're really being encouraged to work on and it is actually not really related to work or to your main job it's like a hobby um, a passion project um, a creative project and i really do feel like this group is mixed here because i feel like some of you are really embracing this you're like, hell yeah, vacation, like play, working on creative projects, working on my hobbies. Like, I would love to have the time to do that. And then others of you are like, ah, but I'm going to fall so behind on my work. But this, it sounds weird when I say this, but like this energy is here, whether you like it or not. Like the sun is coming knocking this month. Um, so yeah, and I hope that you guys can embrace this time to focus on things that you enjoy and just bask in that energy without thinking about all of the things that you should rather be doing or how you're going to catch up when you get back to work. I just really feel like work is not the main focus this month. And I think it's very interesting actually that both of these are our third eye cards because the third eye, it's like seeing the truth seeing past the illusion, seeing beyond the veil. And if it's one thing that society teaches us, it's that work is everything and productivity is so important and the grind is so important and you should figure out how to monetize as much of what you're doing as possible and like exploit yourself and exploit your creativity. That is the model. That is the paradigm that we're living in. And a lot of us do internalize that and and perpetuate those same values to ourselves and that same narrative to ourselves. And I feel like this third eye is you zooming out, zooming out and looking at your life as a whole and realizing like, I've been focusing a lot on work. I've been focusing a lot on making money and being productive and like, that is not my whole life. It's just a tiny piece of it. And I feel like this is about just embracing embracing your whole life again i do see you i actually do see many of you creating this month and even if you are a creative for a living i just see you creating because you love it and creating for fun and not necessarily thinking about am, am i gonna release this am i gonna publish this am i gonna monetize this like the focus is just really not 
there this month. That doesn't mean you're not going to be working at all or not making money at all, but I think that your spiritual team is just wanting you to zoom out a little bit and enjoy other elements of your life at this time. Like the balance needs to be restored. And I wonder with these people here who look kind of disappointed and the scales are making me think of Libra. I wonder if for those of you who are in resistance to doing this, maybe you're worried about disappointing people or like letting people down or worried how people will um, perceive you. I'm thinking about like a content creator came to my mind, maybe because I am one, but feeling like, oh my gosh, I really want to take a break from making content but then thinking about all of those messages you're going to get about like, where are you? When are you posting next? Like feeling pressure from other people could be a reason why some of you are in resistance, which brings me back to the tea leaf cards that are like, you are highly thought of, you are loved. If anything, people will be happy that you're taking this time for yourself and that you're taking this time to recharge because you're going to come back with all of these ideas and all of these inspirations. Take that rest. This could also just be a mental vacation of like, I'm not going to be thinking about my job 24 seven. So finally we have your cards for spiritual and personal growth. So for your tarot, we have the princess of swords, which is the page of swords. And we have dissipating. Mm hmm. Okay, now we have a heart and solar plexus connection. And this is making me quite emotional. And it's kind of making everything come together. I feel like that also explains why we have this mixed energy because I think I'm picking up on the energies of like your soul and the energies of your your ego or like your, your higher self and your human self. Cause I feel like your soul is the one who's like, hell yeah, let's play. <laughs> like, let's play, let's enjoy life. Let's create things. Let's, let's pour energy into our passion projects and our hobbies without any pressure. And then it's the ego that's like, no, we must work. We must be productive. And I feel like there's the, the passion projects, the hobbies, the fun. It's what you really want to do. And there's maybe, for some of you, there's maybe a part of you that almost feels like not worthy of doing the thing you love or doing what is fun for you or doing what is enjoyable for you. Maybe you associate that with like a selfishness of some kind, like associating pleasure with selfishness. And that, that may be from like a, a, an early on memory, but I think it's so interesting that there's these three people who look disappointed and then there's th pictures of three people on the wall. Like the people who I will let down, the people who I will disappoint if I, I do what I really want to do. If I choose a life of fun, if I choose a life of pleasure, if I choose a life of passion, if I prioritize that. Um, this is one of the few Oracle cards. This deck is kind of unusual. <laughs> like every card has a story behind it, but you can't necessarily tell what it is just by looking at it. And this is one of the few cards that I know the story well behind it. This lady is watching the TV show and she's always told herself that one day she's going to make a TV show, but she never does it. So I feel like there's some passion that you've really, really wanted to do or like a hobby that you've really, really wanted to. Oh, I'm getting, I'm, I'm looking at my piano right now and I'm like, <laughs> I feel called out because that is my hobby. And it's not like, I don't do it that much because it's not, productive and it's so silly. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, like a, a passion, something that you just love. 
and that you always tell yourself you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it, but then you don't because something always more important, and I say that with finger quotes, something always more important comes up. As if your enjoyment isn't important, as if your passion isn't important, you always find something to make more important. Something always, something always comes up. And the Page of Swords, or the Princess of Swords in this case, it's very much about getting real with yourself and just seeing the truth of the situation, even if it's not comfortable. And so I wonder if there has been a bit of self-sabotage going on where like you avoid your pleasure and your passion by finding other things to fill your schedule with that you deem as more productive. Like, oh, I really want to do that, but I can't because I have to do this work or I'm so busy with this and that. And like, to be fair, yes, there are things that are out of our control that come in and fill up time in our schedule and take up our energy. But I can't help but wonder, like with this Page of Swords and with the, the personal growth, if for some of you, this is about recognizing the self-sabotage of actively like filling your schedule with stuff and then being like, see, I don't have time to focus on my passion. See, I don't have time to, to do this hobby. I don't have time to do this thing that I enjoy. Because maybe your ego, your ego is avoiding it for some reason. Your ego doesn't value it. It values the like the persona of being a being productive, being useful to other people, pleasing other people. Um, the solar plexus to me it's it's like feeling worthy, feeling worthy of taking up space. And so there's maybe something Ah, it feels like how dare you take up this big chunk of time just to do something for yourself and your own silly leisure. But it's like, no, it's my passion. It's super important. But it's like your ego doesn't see it that way. You have an inner voice that that minimizes or even belittles the things that your soul loves. And I don't think it is your voice. I think it's a voice that you've internalized from, I don't know, from from your childhood or from society of like, it's silly to spend time on that kind of thing. And so consciously or unconsciously um, making your schedule such that there is no time for this passion. And I think this personal growth is about, yeah, like getting real with yourself in, in the ways in which you've perpetuated that. And I'm really happy to see this two of wands energy that is about empowering yourself and, and not being not being in a victim mentality or just not be feeling like you're just at mercy to life. Like whoever comes into my life, I have to accommodate them. Whatever, whatever responsibility pops up, I just have to take it on and I have to let it fill up my time. I just have to do whatever comes my way. Like, no, you can turn things away. You can protect your time and protect your energy and say, no, I'm not doing that. I am, I am playing my piano today. I am painting today. I am dancing today. Like, it's so important to make this time for yourself. And I wish that your ego or whoever's, whoever's voice you've internalized would stop calling it like frivolous and unnecessary because it is, it's very much the opposite of that. This is your life force. This is your soul expression. It's what you truly love. And she deserves the time of day too. Yeah. So group number ones, those are all the messages that I have for you. Thank you so much for letting me do this reading for you. I just saw 3333, by the way. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching this and a wonderful month of July. And I wish you all the best. 
Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. If you enjoy my content and you'd like to find me elsewhere, I'm gonna have linked down below my tarot reading Instagram, my personal Instagram, my Patreon, where you can watch tons of timeless, exclusive pick a card readings. Well, this one is not timeless. I always say that, but the monthly ones are not timeless. But anyway, the Patreon ones are. <laughs> they are timeless, exclusive readings similar to the ones we do here on this channel and you can also decide on topics for future readings over there um, i'm gonna link my music channel which includes the intro song of this video that is an original song i will also have my latest release link down below and finally my vlog channel and my merch which features the floating temple that was at the start of this video Thank you guys so much for supporting me, my channel, and anything I do. I really, really appreciate having you here, and I'm sending so much love to you, to anyone who appeared in this reading directly or indirectly, to your higher self, your spirit guides, your spiritual team, and all of your loved ones, both here on Earth and in the other realms, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye! Hi number twos, so if you guys chose the green onyx, this is going to be a reading all about your month of July 2024. We are going to start off with the general overview of your month where we see the main themes and the main energies that you're working with this month, as well as significant events and changes coming your way. And to do that, we're going to be looking at these oracle cards, so let's get into it. Your first card is Orca with the number 18 and communications. Orca could be a significant animal for you. The number 18 could be significant, like the 18th of this month, for example. Um, communications, this could mean so many different things. Um, for some of you, there could be a specific relationship of yours where you are enjoying improved communication, more open, more smooth communication. Um, if there is a specific communication that you are waiting from, like you're, like you're waiting to hear back from somebody about some news or some results, you could be receiving that message in the month of July. You could also be in a career or a field of study that has to do with communications, media, language, uh, just like the dissemination of ideas. Okay, yeah, <laughs> number 18. Definitely significant for this group, 18, 18. So the 18th could be like a lucky day for you or like something very important is gonna happen on this day. Um, this is the number in tarot, this is the number of the moon as well. So like Pisces energy could be significant, someone with Pisces placements or the communication that we see here could also be talking about like psychic communication or telepathic communication. For those of you who have felt that someone's higher self is communicating to you or that you have a telepathic connection with someone, this is confirming that for sure. Like this communications can mean so many different things and I'm probably gonna be coming back to it throughout this reading as we uncover more, but communication seems to be the main theme for you this month or like there's a significant event happening surrounding you receiving communication or improving communication with someone um this is called i guess the wheel dragon <laughs> it's like the circular dragon and it says something that has been completed is now being set into motion. So it has the feeling of moving into the next stages of something. Actually, I just got a very specific example of this energy. Like someone who has been through um, all of the stages of an interview process and now they've finally gotten that communication that they got the job. Because this says like something has been completed. Like you've gone through all of the stages and something has been decided and now it's time to actually set those plans into motion. So I feel like for many of you, if you resonate with like you're waiting for a message, waiting for a communication to come in, it's probably some kind of green light that you're getting. Like you've been through a whole application process or you've been through a whole negotiation process. There's been this like back and forth. And for some of you, this could be something that you're nervous about because another meaning with 
that moon energy, that number 18 energy, it can be like fears and worries surrounding the unknown, surrounding the unseen. Maybe some of you have been even having like, you know, when you're stressed and you have weird dreams about the thing that you're stressed about. So like if you've been waiting to hear back about something, I feel like it's been always kind of in your subconscious mind and maybe been worrying about it, maybe been dreaming about it. Um, definitely it's the culmination of something that you've put a lot of effort into because this is something that's been completed, that's come full circle. And it's like, now we're finally getting the green light of like, you've been accepted or we can go ahead with this now. We can start actually like acting on our plans. So I do feel that this is good news good news that is coming in. It feels like full circle. It feels like completion. It feels like accomplishments. Maybe even this communications is like, you just got really exciting news about your life, like an exciting achievement, an exciting milestone. And so you're getting a lot of messages from different people coming in who are like congratulating you and celebrating you. Then for our astro cards, we have Chiron. We have the keyword healing, insecurity, wounds, vulnerabilities, deep-seated pain, teaching, powers, spiritual strength, difficulties, guilt, transmuting, and healing others. Something that's coming through is feeling... And I, this is a subjective experience. It's not like an objective judgment, but some of you might be feeling like you are being like dram the word dramatic is coming to my mind of like, why am I so nervous? Like, yes, this is important, but why am I so nervous about it? Why do I care so much? Why am I so attached to the result? Why am I so emotional or on edge about whether I'm going to hear back from this person or whether this is gonna work out. You may have a subjective experience that your emotions regarding this situation are very intense. And it might be because some theme about this experience is striking a wound. Like in the job interview example, anybody who's waiting to hear back from a job interview it's, it's reasonable to assume that they would be a little bit nervous or like, I hope everything's okay. But if they're having quite intense or overwhelming emotional reactions surrounding the situation, it may be because there's some theme around like, will this person accept me? Or am I going to get rejected again? Am I going to be overlooked again? Like that theme might be a sensitive spot for that person because of like a past wound. So there may be something in like waiting for communication from someone or improving communication with someone or having to communicate with someone that you feel like, why are my emotions surrounding this so strong? And it's not it's not like dramatic or overreacting. It's just your subconscious remembering something from the past that was quite challenging or even quite painful. This moon energy makes a lot of sense because the moon is like those subconscious things that are swirling around and making us feel all types of ways. So um, actually this going well, receiving this acceptance, receiving this green light could actually be very healing because it's rewriting the narrative for you like those of you for those of you who do have wounds surrounding like rejection or being overlooked or being ignored i feel like going through with these plans getting a positive response from someone getting getting a green light getting the go ahead will be healing because it shows alternative evidence to your subconscious of like see we, we can get rec recognition, we can get acceptance, we can get green lights from the universe. So start, start keeping track of that. We're gonna prove you wrong. We're gonna prove these wounds wrong and actually heal through living an opposite experience of the one that hurt us or traumatized us. I love that. We also have resourcefulness with the sun in Cancer, which actually, the sun is going to be in Cancer in the month of July, so that makes sense. <laughs> in the first, um, probably on the 18th, not probably, definitely. <laughs> on the 18th, the sun is going to be in Cancer. So 
on or around this date, I'm telling you, it's an important date for this group. Um, we also have the number four, so the 4th of July, shout out to the Americans watching. <laughs> Um, that could be an important day um, or somebody with cancer placements could be significant to you if you do know your Chiron sign um, Someone who has placements the same as your Chiron sign could also be significant So for example, my Chiron is in Virgo. So if this is my reading then Virgo people could be significant to me um Resourcefulness and I think this is referring to like the crow's ability to I'm just guessing because there's that story about the crow um, Dropping rocks in the thing <laughs> so that the water level rises and the crow can drink because the crow's resourceful um, This is obviously a positive trait, but next to Chiron something about it feels a bit sad and this yeah, this has to do with like healing and personal growth. Um, resourcefulness is a good trait to have, but if you are living in a state where you constantly have to be resourceful, I feel like that's not favorable. And I'm just seeing all these examples of like, um, for example, someone being praised for a trait that is good. Like, oh, you're so you're so generous, you're so generous, you're so helpful. It's like, yeah, thanks. That's because I base my worth on how useful I am to other people and the idea of disappointing others is terrifying to me. You know, like the trait itself might look good, but the reason the person developed that trait could actually be quite painful for them or like rooted in trauma. And so it feels weird or like uncomfortable to get praised for that and so I wonder if there's an aspect of your healing and personal growth in this month where you're realizing like traits that have helped you survive up until now might not be necessary anymore or you're realizing that traits that you've been praised for by people around you are actually not traits that are like comfortable for you to keep performing because it comes from like a survival instinct or like a an instinct to protect yourself or it comes from trauma or something like that. I, I feel like I had another example, but now it is escaping me. But yeah, or like you're, you're so, you're so nice. You're so accommodating. And it's like, thanks. I'm terrified of confrontation, <laughs> you know, something like that. Um, you're so hardworking. Thanks, I'm, I have a crippling fear of failure and I tie all of my value to my work. It's like, it's so much deeper than what you might see on the surface as just being like a positive trait. So that could be something that you're examining. I do feel like healing is another theme for this month, but healing, a lot of your healing is coming through having experiences that negate what your insecurities tell you. So like healing through external stimuli or external experiences, which is really, really nice. So that also leads me to think that you will find people or be surrounded by people who love and accept you just because you're you rather than like, oh, you have this wonderful trait that benefits me and praising you for that, but just like praising and loving you for your very existence. You may realize that your personality starts to change when you heal as well. And there might be a resistance or even a fear, like an egoic fear associated with that. Like, for example, the example of someone who's really, really hardworking, but it's because they have a huge fear of failure and tie all their value to their work. If they start to heal that, their personality might change or they might become like less productive or less hardworking because they don't need, they don't feel that they need that for survival anymore. They don't feel that they need that for acceptance anymore because they've healed that and they realize that, that their mere existence is enough. And then 
that might be it's like the ego is like, are you sure you want to heal that? Because we'll we'll stop being productive. <laughs> it's like that kind of thing where, and I don't know if you guys have been through this before, but there's also some things that I've been, that my ego has been afraid of me healing and then tries to stop me from healing it <laughs> because it knows that it will like lose control if I do. But yeah, I feel like this is about your personality changing or dropping some traits as a result of your healing and realizing the aspects of your personality that were not really your true personality but were kind of adopted from painful or traumatic experiences interesting lots of healing happening this month for sure so let's get into your tea leaf cards to see anything else you need to know about this month specific events things to look forward to things to look out for or just any other messages from your guides we have dragon with beware of self-delusion. Why am I thinking of, there's the word delusion, but then there's also like diluting something, like diluting something. And I just, it just came to me like that. Like beware of diluting yourself. Like making yourself um, like a weaker version of yourself to be more palatable. Beware of doing that. We have valley, deep personal strength and peace that assure success. This is also giving healing. And also your success is assured. Your spiritual team is saying to you, your success is assured. And I feel like if anything, you guys are delusional in like the negative way. Like the negative way you view yourself is delusional. Or like if you think that you're not going to be successful, if you think that you can't do it, that in itself is delusional. We also have wheel indecisiveness, allowing your life to ramble aimlessly, but your success is assured. I wonder if we're overcoming like a fear of success, a fear of success or a fear of getting what you want, because this is kind of giving the vibe that indecision could also be delusional because it's like you, you know deep down you know deep down what you truly want to do. And it's, I kind of sense an irony here because you might think that believing you can get what you want is delusional, but actually like doubting yourself and holding yourself back is delusional. And so in your attempt to not be delulu, it's actually more so delusional. Like realizing how amazing you are and how capable you are is the realistic thing is the logical thing and there may be something that you you tell yourself a story that you're indecisive about it but the truth is that you actually know that this is what you want but maybe you're afraid that you won't be successful and that is the delulu thing that you are doing <laughs> yeah so this concludes the general overview part of your reading. So we're going to get into the specific areas of your life now. As you can see, I have one tarot card and one oracle card each for your love life and relationships, your career and studies, and your spiritual and personal growth. So let's start off with your love life and relationships. For your tarot card, we have the Queen of Cups, which is so cool because... This is, both of these are chakra decks, but this is a third eye card. And we were just talking before about like a psychic connection, telepathic communication, and how I felt like these cards were confirming it. And then to get the Queen of Cups, who is an intuitive and psychic archetype, and the third eye associated with her, like that is really being confirmed. So there could be a specific person whose higher self you are in very frequent communication with um, or in general your spiritual team wants you to know that you do have this gift of being able to send and receive telepathic messages which i think we all do to some capacity but it seems that you are very tapped into this gift and you have been successfully sending and receiving telepathic messages to people and we also have impatience with the throat the throat chakra, which is also communication. It looks... Mm -hmm. There may be 
you guys may be feeling impatient with the the pace at which things are developing in the 3D because it feels like in the 5D things things are going so smoothly or you have a very clear vision of the energetic potential of something or you have a very clear vision of what it's going to become but here on earth things don't move as smoothly and things take more time and so being able to have your consciousness exist on both planes could actually be a little bit frustrating so there could you could be really feeling that gap in july like something's not it's like you're having dreams or visions or psychic experiences about something and then it's just not really progressing like that in the 3D or it's taking a much longer time. Um, and maybe it's with regards to a relationship because this is the section of love, life and relationships. But yeah, that's definitely one way that I can interpret this. But, you know, the Queen of Cups and just the suit of cups in general, it, it does feel slow, but not in a way that it's blocked or delayed, just slow in a way that we're taking our time and we're letting things unfold naturally. And so I feel like the less you are in a hurry, the more you will enjoy your love life and relationships. And I'm also thinking of this throat chakra energy as narratives, stories. There may be certain things that you are impatient about, not because that's actually how your soul feels, but because of just the stories that you have been fed for your whole life. Like just one example but you know our whole life we've been told especially women i feel like like getting married especially like being straight and marrying a man it's like the the ultimate goal and then like having his babies is the ultimate goal and that's your happily ever after and so i think some of if you're feeling impatient about getting somewhere in a relationship or reaching a, a milestone in love and relationships or like getting to the next stage it might be worth examining like is what is this impatience rooted in because i just from looking at this i have a feeling that the nature of your soul is just patient allowing letting things flow organically not in any rush not worried and the impatience comes from stories that you tell yourself or stories that society, family, media has, has told you about like, this is what you should want and you should be moving in this direction and you should be hitting these milestones. Maybe even saying you should have it by a certain age or you should have it after a certain amount of time. And it's okay to want these things. It's lovely to want these things. But if it's making you feel like frustrated or anxious or uncomfortable or feeling like you're falling behind or feeling like why am I not there yet why are we not there yet um that might be worth unpacking J just the way it looks here I don't think the impatience is like soul-based or like based in real love it's like a, a an anxiousness it's like a egoic sense of urgency at least that is what it looks like here and I think another theme of this month, just in general, is examining, examining the feeling that lies behind, or not the feeling, like the energy that lies behind your motivations, your urges, your expectations, and being like, where is this coming from? What is really at the root of this? Like getting to the root of things, getting to the bottom of things and what drives you rather than just being unconsciously driven by it, I think is another theme of this month for you. Okay, so next we have your cards for career and studies. Ooh, for your tarot card, we have the world, which is so cool because that's very much giving completion, full circle. We're ready, we're ready for the next steps feeling accomplished 
and feeling seen and feeling chosen. Something is going really well for you in your career this month. Like a really exciting opportunity is coming in or you're hitting, you may be completing a project that's been a long time in the making um, and like it's finally time to put it out into the world like a really celebratory completion of something, a graduation of sorts, a leveling up of sorts, gaining more recognition, um, gaining more visibility, being admired, being respected. Like I feel like you're enjoying a great reputation as well. There's also something about being chosen, being chosen, being selected. Ooh, and for your oracle card, we have self-worth. Yes, yes, yes. And I love that this is sacral chakra because that's your gut. So even more proof, like your success is assured and you know this, like deep down in your gut, you know this. You know that you're meant for this opportunity. It's it's your mind that deludes you and, and plants doubts into your head. And I feel like same thing here in your relationships. There's something where like deep down in your gut, you know everything's going to be okay. Deep down in your gut, you know that everything's fine. But it's like all these narratives about how things should be that get into your head and, and make you doubt. Um, looking at this, there's a role, there's a position that you are destined to step into. Yeah, there's a new opportunity coming in or a promotion coming in or you're in the spotlight in some way with this light shining down and you, like you're ready to gain the recognition and the visibility that you deserve. But you need you need to know that this chair is yours to sit in it. The universe can show you your guides can show you, your higher self can show you, but you need to recognize, yes, this chair is mine. You're even, you even got a throne here. Like this is, this role is meant for you. Um, and feeling like you're really worthy to take up space in this field and to be recognized as one of the best and to have this, this visibility and to have these eyes on you. I feel like you're becoming increasingly comfortable with that. The world definitely has a feeling of more, more eyes on you. You could be doing something online or you could be recognized by people all over the world. You could be collaborating or doing business internationally as well. That's another thing that the world makes me think, but this is definitely a really big month. Like it's a big opportunity, big milestone. And finally feeling worthy of like, stepping into bigger spaces or sitting in sitting in bigger thrones like you're you're moving up in some way and then finally for your personal growth your spiritual and personal growth we have the four of coins and we have impartiality and this is a crown chakra card this is crown chakra, this is heart chakra. Um, this is also related to the sun in Capricorn. So a Capricorn person could be significant. Um, what I feel when I look at this is that your the universe is impartial. Spirit is impartial and does not judge you. And I feel with this four of coins, the way he's holding on to all of the coins, there's a feeling of sticking what's the expression like sticking to your guns or again sticking to your gut feeling and recognizing that the universe is not evaluating you the universe is just observing you and to be to stand more firmly in how you feel there's, there's a lot in this reading about getting back in touch with how you truly feel and healing from self-doubt. 
and really like trusting yourself and really standing firm in the truth of who you are. And I think something that will help you do that, something that will really help you do that is recognizing that spirit is impartial and spirit is not judging you. So an example that's coming to my mind for this energy is like, let's say that there's someone who um, you're upset. You're upset with the way that they behaved towards you. And then like you're asking your spirit guides or you're asking the universe, like, should I be more patient with them? Should I, should I be more compassionate towards them? Should I give them the benefit of the doubt? And the spirit's kind of like, you tell me and not in a dismissive way, but in like a, this is your experience. Like I'm not, you're upset. I'm not judging that. I'm observing you. We are all, you've probably heard this, how we're all extensions of the universe and the universe is learning about itself through different perspectives. So being true to your perspective and your experience actually helps the universe understand itself better and then leads to its expansion. So when you're saying you're upset about the way someone acted, the universe is like, oh, I see, okay. And that's, that's your perspective and that's your truth and I see you and I'm observing you. I am not, um, I'm not testing you, I'm not evaluating you. I'm not attaching a judgment to how you feel in this experience. It's not a question of should I feel this way or not. It's just a statement. This is how I feel. And that that requires like being in one place within yourself and being rooted in it and not looking to this person and that person and over here and over there to be like is this is this okay? Is it, I'm having this experience. Is that okay? Um, it's not like, it's not a test. I think it's realizing that like your life is an experience. It's you experiencing life. It's you're not being tested on how you perform is kind of how it's coming through. Or you're not being evaluated on how you interpret what happens to you. Like you're allowed to interpret what happens to you in any way or or feel about it the way you feel about it or experience it how you experience it it's not it's not right or wrong if you're if you're upset at that person if you're not upset at that person even like let's say you're not upset at someone and then you're like should i be like does this mean i don't have boundaries like no if you're not upset that's great <laughs> you know i think it's this there's this feeling of like, is how I feel okay? Is what I'm doing right now okay? And feeling like something above, like like the universe or a higher power should evaluate if this is okay. And I wonder if that's also like a, a, a past trauma thing of maybe not being able to, oh that, oh my gosh, I just got really emotional with that. Like not, not even being able to trust like, I'm, I'm experiencing this emotion right now, but is this okay? Should I, should I modify this to be better? And this is like coming back to just the, the raw experience of how you feel and just letting it be that, you know, 32, 32, as I'm talking about that. I hope that that makes sense. Whew, I just got hit with like a big wave of, felt like I was going to tear up because because it sucks if you can't do that, if you can't just be like, this is how I feel, and it is what it is, you know? It just is. It's not right or wrong, it just is. Yeah. So, releasing self-doubt and, and welcoming in self-belief and self-acceptance. Yeah. And... I think we might have to, we, <laughs> this may be a month of, I guess, deprogramming, deprogramming stories that you have internalized about what, how your life should or shouldn't be or how you should or shouldn't feel. 
because it's all baloney. You don't should or shouldn't feel any kind of way. You just feel how you feel and it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes. <laughs> These are all the messages for my group number twos. Thank you so much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night and of course a wonderful month of July. And I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. If you enjoy my content and you'd like to find me elsewhere, I'm going to have linked down below my tarot reading Instagram, my personal Instagram, my Patreon, where you can watch tons of exclusive pick a card readings just like this one. And you can also decide on topics for future readings. I will link my music channel, which includes the intro song of this video. That is an original song. I will also have my latest release link down below. And finally, my vlog channel and my merch, which features the floating temple that was at the start of this video. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, my channel, and anything I do. I really, really appreciate having you here, and I'm sending so much love to you, to anyone else who appeared in this reading directly or indirectly. I'm sending love to your higher self, your spirit guides, your spiritual team, and all of your loved ones, both here on earth and in the other realms, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye! Hi, number threes. So if you guys chose the Mukite Jasper, this is going to be a reading all about your, why was I going to say all about your year? All about your month of July, 2024. So we're going to start with the general overview of your month where we see the main themes, the main energies that you're working with, as well as significant events and changes that may be coming your way. And to do that, we're going to be looking at these Oracle cards right here. So let's get started. Your first card is Crocodile with the number six, and we have Hidden Obstacles. Okay, this gives me the feeling of working on a significant project or going through a significant transition, perhaps even something like learning a new skill, where when you first started, you were maybe underestimating all of the different steps that were required or like there were just things that you hadn't considered and so it's like going into it you're like yeah let's do it let's go for it and you're feeling enthusiastic and then just things that you hadn't anticipated start popping up and you're like oh crap it's not a bad thing frustrating yes learning experience also yes i can think of many times where I've, I've been through an energy like this. So there may be some little inconveniences and frustrations that pop up this month as you work out the kinks in a significant project, a significant transition. It could even be like an application. Oh my gosh, as someone who's been through many visa applications, there's always stuff like this popping up of like, oh, actually we need this document or actually you dotted this eye funny and you have to come back and fix it. Just like annoying, unexpected things popping up, but it's all part of a process that is very worth it. And like the end result is going to be worth it. But yeah, there could be some, some little bumps in the road like that this month. I actually want to go into my handy pocket guide to spirit animals. And I'm going to see if there's a crocodile in here and see what that passage has to say. Um, is there? Okay, there's not crocodile, but let's see if there's an alligator. I know that they're not the same, but that will be the closest thing if it is in here. Oh, alligator and then crocodile in parentheses. Take your time to digest what you're now learning rather than rushing ahead to pursue further education or gather more information. You need to be very protective of your personal territory and assertive about setting boundaries. This is a time for renewal and new beginnings as you emerge from a dark period of your life. Be sure to gather all the facts and look at the situation from all sides before passing judgment, making any decisions or taking action. It's an important time to honor your ancestors in any way you choose. 
Oh, that's a lovely message at the end. I just saw 333 as well as we're talking about your ancestors. So if you have been, and also you guys are group number three. If you have been seeing this number or if you've been seeing any sort of angel numbers and wondering what they mean, that could very well be your ancestors letting you know that they're with you and they are assisting you during this time. And I do think whatever you guys are working on here, it is very important and it is very much going to be worth it. Um, and these obstacles are not a sign of you messing up. It's just kind of part of the the journey. Like anyone would be coming up against these challenges on this journey. It, it is kind of just an annoying process. <laughs> That's just kind of the way it is. But it's a learning experience and you're going through some kind of growing pains as you work for something that is really, really worth it to you. Another thing I wanted to mention from this card and also from this passage is uh, be sure to not like really take your time and don't let impatience get the better of you. I feel like I'm being called out here as an Aries, but like, um, you know, for example, let's say you're reading an instruction manual and you're like, ah, I can skip that. I already know that. Or like, I can skip, I can skip the beginner textbooks. I already know that. And then you just kind of like, you want to rush ahead to the next step, but then you realize like, oh crap, I should have read the manual. I should have, I should have done the tutorial. I should have read the beginner textbook. Um, just make sure that you're not skipping any steps and never assume that like, oh, I already know that or oh, I don't need that. Also maybe hold on to things. I just imagined someone getting a kit and there's a little like gadget in there and they're like, oh, I'm never gonna use that and they throw it away. And then later they're like, oh crap, I could have used that. So hold on to things, do all of the steps, get all of the information before you take action. And that might lessen the amount of obstacles that come your way in the future. We also have the flow dragon with the number 33 and we just saw 333. Also, as I'm holding this up, 555 on the camera timer, which is like significant change is coming your way. And this says you are like getting in a good flow or like you're riding a good wave. So no matter what bumps in the road are coming up, you will get through it. I feel like I know it's frustrating, but there's almost a message of like to not get too attached to every little thing that goes wrong and just just flow with it, just let it go and like recognize that it's a part of the journey and it's not it's not like your mistake. It's not like you did something wrong. I've been noticing, you know, I think as a spiritual people or me personally as a spiritual person, I tend to think a lot about the reason behind why everything is happening. Like, oh, the universe orchestrated this because blah, 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 because I was supposed to learn this and this and that. And, and that can be a helpful way of thinking sometimes, but when I'm having a day where things are going wrong, sometimes it just feels really good to be like, you know what, today's just a shitty day. <laughs> like, and it's fine and that's the way it is. Cause getting so caught up in like, why is the universe doing this? Sometimes it just makes it, it makes it even more frustrating. And to just like throw your hands up and be like, just take the wheel, you know? Like I'm just, I'm just embracing that it's a shitty day and just help me, help me get through it. Sometimes that just makes it a lot easier. So there will be some annoying times this month, but you will get through them. You will get in the flow. And I also feel like whatever you're working on or whatever you're pursuing, the, the first stages of it are the most frustrating. And then once you get the hang of it, it'll get easier and easier and easier. And if obstacles pop up, rather than beating yourself up, think of it as like, oh, okay, now I know this for next time. So that next time I do this, it will be smoother. Okay, for your astro cards, we have the sixth house. We have some Virgo energy here. So Virgo people could be significant, people with Virgo placements. Um, and then we have the planet of Mercury. So if you know your Mercury sign, people with the same sign as your Mercury could be significant this month. So for example, 
my Mercury is in Aries. If this is my reading, then Aries people could be significant. Um, kind of cool too that we have like six, six, and then 33, which adds up to six. Um, these dates could also be an important time of the month. So like the third to the sixth, three, four, five, six of July could be important dates. Uh, and then we have the keywords of work, habits, health, service, colleagues, employees, skills, workplace, daily routines, nutrition, diet, fitness, hygiene, checkups, and responsibilities. This could be a month where I feel like you could be doing a lot of paperwork or sending many emails back and forth with a certain person or organization. You could be setting up a lot of appointments. You could be commuting back and forth somewhere. Um, your daily routine might look slightly different because of something that you are committed to or something that you are working on. This could be a month as well where you're just focused on or examining your routine and any changes that need to be made. You could be focused on your health, focused on your habits, um, being organized will really help you this month, which is easier said than done, but <laughs> yeah, staying organized and being proactive, like making sure that you're getting things done well in advance in case I should really be taking my own advice in this reading. Um, yeah, making sure that you're getting things done well in advance. Um, like like in the classic Virgo fashion and then we have the number four which Yeah, like three four five six of July could be important. We have charity With Saturn in cancer, so it's interesting. We had service here and then we have charity here there could be a focus on how you how you can help others or how you can serve others or you could be the one who is receiving help and assistance this month. I really like this image, how it looks like the angels are helping the people. And especially because Saturn is like the father and Cancer is the motherly sign, this card is also giving me the feeling of ancestors who are watching over you and helping you and helping you to achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve. I think there's also, there's also a message about just taking things one day at a time. It's, it's good to look at the bigger picture. It's good to zoom out sometimes, especially like when you're faced with daily frustrations, it's good to zoom out, look at the bigger picture and remember why you're doing what you're doing. But I also think that sometimes when you're focusing too much on the end goal, it can feel overwhelming. And when you're feeling overwhelmed or when you're feeling discouraged, it might actually be helpful to then zoom in and be like, I don't have to worry about the end goal right now. Let's just focus on the task in front of us. Let's just take it one day at a time, like focusing on your daily habits rather than rather than the end goal. Um, I, I feel like I talk about this a lot, but I run and I get a lot of, I just get a lot of insights from it. I feel like there's so many metaphors about life that you can take from running. And if I, there's so, there's so many interesting things you can learn about your psychology too, because if I tell myself from the start, like we're gonna run for an hour and a half, I will get overwhelmed and my brain will start to be like, oh my God, so tired, I'm so tired. And like, I won't be able to do it. But if I break the run down into like three minute increments and I just keep telling myself, oh, I just have to focus on the next three minutes. I just have to get through the next three minutes. Then it feels easy. Even though I'm doing the same thing, my brain is perceiving it as a smaller task. And then those three minute increments add up and eventually it's 90 minutes and it's like, I did it, you know? It, the way you frame it makes so much of a difference. The brain is a sneaky thing, you know? <laughs> 
Um, but if you figure out how to work with it, you can do amazing things. So, you know, just check in with yourself and how you're feeling. You might find that sometimes uh, zooming out and looking at the bigger picture of things takes pressure off of you. And then you may find that other times it's helpful to zoom in and just really focus on the thing that's right in front of you. And, you know, use that ability to zoom in and out to your advantage because sometimes focusing on the small stuff is gonna help you do more. And sometimes not sweating the small stuff and zooming out is gonna help you do more. So see, see how you feel when you <laughs> when you zoom in and out. Because there's no objective right or wrong answer, just whatever serves you in that moment. Okay, so next we're gonna look at these tea leaf cards to get our final messages in the general overview part. So these could be specific events, things to look forward to, things to look out for, just anything else that your guides want you to know. We have lightning, control your anger or you will be sorry. We have flute, disappointment in a friend or lover. And then we have owl, good advice from a wise person. So I can definitely see how these two go together. There, there could be someone who's disappointing you and then you feel angry at them, which is very valid. But it seems that there's a message here of like, be careful. Like it's okay to be frustrated with what they did, but if you were, for example, if you were to like snap at them or yell at them or like say something mean to them in your anger, you might regret it later. And there's even, there was that message in the alligator card about make sure that you get, make sure that you get all the information before um, before you take action or before you react. Like there might be, if you learn more context about, for example, maybe they, they promised that they were gonna show up for something and then they didn't. But if you learn more context, it, it makes sense why they didn't show up. Like maybe something bad happened they were dealing with something really bad or um, it's like the more information you get about the situation, you would regret having snapped at them if, if you did hypothetically. I'm not saying you will, but there may be a situation where even if you're frustrated, which is very valid, you might just want to be like the bigger person and be calm and be forgiving because later when you learn more context and what they're going through you'll be glad that you and not it's not to say that you shouldn't be angry but it's like you'll be glad that you didn't throw that anger at them in that moment if that makes sense so just something to keep in mind if you if someone like lets you down this month yeah um okay so that concludes the general overview part of your month. We're gonna move into the specific areas of your life now. As you can see, I have one tarot card and one oracle card each for your love life and relationships, your career and studies, and your spiritual and personal growth. I just wanna mention, by the way, I feel like of all the groups, I feel the most like alert in this one, which is strange to me because Usually you would think in the last group, oh, I'm starting to get tired, but no, it's opposite. Like I'm the most like bushy tailed, bright eyed and bushy tailed for this group. So maybe that's a sign of how you will be feeling this month, like feeling focused and having energy. I hope so. I wish that for you. Anyway, so let's look at your cards for your love life and relationships. For your tarot card, we have death. And for your oracle card, we have impasse. So this is a, is this a crown? I believe this is a crown chakra card. Now I'm, I'm about to start looking at, <laughs> I think it is, yeah, yeah. 
and this is a sacral chakra card. So yeah, both of the decks that we're using today are chakra themed. So I feel like when your spiritual team, and there was another group that had this, when your spiritual team talks to you, you probably feel it in like literally in your gut, in your stomach. And that might be something that you want to keep in mind in the month ahead as well. Um, death is related to the sign of Scorpio. So uh, a Scorpio person or someone with Scorpio placements could be significant. But as maybe you can guess, death does have to do with an ending, uh, a letting go of sorts. If you have had an ending with someone, like if you went through a breakup or if there was a ghosting situation, something like that, this could represent the moment where you're finally, where you're finally getting over that. Um, for those of you who are currently dealing with someone like, cause with impasse, I feel like some of you could be dealing with a person that you just can't see eye to eye with them or you have these fundamental differences that you can't seem to reconcile. And if you're dealing with a dynamic like that, it does look like you might be making the decision to just, just let it go, like to go your separate ways. And for some of you, that could look like ending the relationship. For others of you, it could just look like ending, ending a certain dynamic within the relationship. So let's say, for example, you were going to um, start a, a business with your friend or start a venture with your friend. But then as you move along, you find that you just have like maybe you have very different ideas about money or your vision, your vision for the business is just so different. And you tried to find something that you're both happy about. Maybe you tried to find a middle ground, you tried to compromise, but you just weren't, you just couldn't agree. And so that doesn't mean that you stop being friends with this person, but maybe it just means that, okay, we don't move forward with this business idea. So I think for some of you, it doesn't have to be that the relationship ends, but it's like, okay, clearly we can't, you know, we can't do this together because we can't, we can't agree about this. Um, or like maybe with a family member, it's like, we clearly, we just have different views on this. So let's not let's just drop it. Let's not talk about it anymore. Let's agree that when we have family gatherings, we're not going to bring this up because clearly every time we do, it just starts arguments and we can't move forward from it. So let's just drop it kind of thing. So, I mean, if you have been feeling like maybe it's time to end a relationship with someone, then this could definitely be a confirmation. But for those of you who are watching this and you're like, but I don't want to end any of my relationships, I think it could just be like, there's a certain thing that you're agreeing with that person. Like, we're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to talk about this anymore. We're not going to move forward with this idea because we just disagree on it. And, and that's that, it, that kind of thing. Um, okay, so for your career and studies, Oh, look at this. For your tarot card, we have the Ten of Cups. Beautiful, beautiful. I love the yellow gold colors of this. Um, this would be related to the solar plexus. And there's something about the butterflies. It feels like you're spreading your wings and you're reaching your full potential. Career looks beautiful for you this month. Your work looks beautiful. Like Ten of Cups is one of the happiest cards in the tarot. So there's a big wish, a big wish regarding your career that is coming true, or you're finding yourself in a job or in a role that makes you really, really happy. And most importantly, that gives you emotional fulfillment. For those of you who have struggled to like find a job that makes you happy or that, that really brings you satisfaction, I feel like the missing piece might be 
feeling an emotional investment in your work and feeling like you're really connecting with others and, and helping others in the work that you do. Just because we have charity and service, I think you're finding yourself in a role where you have a really positive impact on those you work with and that's very, very fulfilling to you. Um, I was just, <laughs> I, I just thought of this right now. I was watching um, a music video and I was reading the comments and somebody had left a long comment kind of telling the story of how this musician's music saved their life. And I'm, I'm oh my gosh, I'm getting emotional. Like I actually cried when I read the comment because just, it doesn't matter what you do for work. You can, you can touch people that you don't even know. You can move people that you don't even know. And to think that this musician is just doing what they're passionate about and they were able to save someone's life from that. Like, oh my gosh, I just started tearing up. Um, and that's, I think there's something like that where you're going to see you're gonna have a very emotional moment where you see how the work that you're doing is positively impacting others and like this moment of that's, and that's why I do this. That's why I do what I do. And th like, thank you for giving meaning to what I do and thank you for motivating me to keep going. You know, that's the kind of, it's feeling really emotionally connected to your work or really connected to those you impact and just feeling really, really happy for what you do. Ooh, I love it. And for your Oracle card, we have perseverance. So this feels like a moment of joy and a moment of satisfaction in your work where you realize like, that's why it's worth it to persevere. And you know, we had that message of obstacles at the start of the reading there's something here and even with the number 10 being about completion there's something here about your hard work really paying off and not only you getting to enjoy the fruits of your labor but others as well and it's this moment where you're like this is why i keep going when things are hard and this this is what makes it all worth it these are the moments that I live for kind of thing, like really feeling happy about the work that you're doing and feeling that sense of deep purpose behind it. You know, it's very emotional. Even with this being the sacral chakra, that's, that's water. That's about, uh, all of these are water actually. That's like connecting to others, building intimacy with others, feeling a sense of with the solar plexus feeling a sense of belonging it's just this really beautiful like happiness and inner peace and emotional fulfillment that you're feeling with what you do also for those of you who are single you could be meeting someone because i'm just thinking of there's like this couple here you could be meeting your person through your work or through your studies but yeah, definitely seeing the impact of how you've helped others and moved others and that's going to go straight to your heart. Okay, and then finally we have your cards for spiritual and personal growth. Lots of water coming out for this group. I wonder if you're surrounded by a lot of water signs or maybe you have a lot of water placements because like Scorpio, the element of water, Pisces, the element of water, <laughs> the element of water. We had cancer here. There's a crocodile in the water, like just water everywhere. I don't know if I said this already, but maybe you are like taking a trip to the water or spending time in, in or around a body of water. Even the flowing, flowing dragon, like going with the current that feels watery too, man. <laughs> um, yeah, so princess of cups which is the page of cups and then for your oracle card we have gratitude yeah and this feels like a, a zooming in kind of energy because pages they represent things that are small so oh wait there could be a message about children too because this person is pregnant 
and pages can represent children. And then here we also have a family with children and here we also have someone holding children. So you could, I mean, maybe you have children of your own or you'll be spending time with children, maybe working with children or spending time with the children in your family. Um, it could also be, there could be a pregnancy announced this month, whether that is you or someone close to you. And of course, it can also be um, symbolic of your inner child. But yeah, there's quite a few messages of children as well. Um, and I wonder if this is even... That kind of takes on a new meaning for those of you who have children. Like, because I just imagine a, a parent who is really like stressed out and then and they're going through a lot and they're really highly strung and then maybe their child does something and they just have a moment where they're like ah! and maybe they they raise their voice or or snap or something and then they regret it later when they're like they feel really bad um yeah there's something about i mean this sounds very menacing <laughs> control your anger or you will be sorry but i think it's just like you know, you might be, you're dealing with stuff, right? And so just make sure that, that it doesn't get like taken out on people around you. Even, even if they're the one who disappointed you, just, uh, there's something about not, not snapping that like a crocodile <laughs> that you want to be careful about. Anyway, back to this. So and we have more butterflies here. Spreading your wings and reaching your full potential. Um, I don't know what these flowers and vines are, but it's making me think of ivy. So someone named ivy could be significant. But anyway, this feels like zoomed in. This feels like small things because pages are small. So I think that this element of your spiritual and personal growth is... And it's so simple. It's just learning to appreciate the little things, which, you know, it's, it's something that we hear said a lot, you know, like appreciate the small things, find joy in the little things, but making that a regular practice, it can be difficult sometimes. I think it requires quite a bit of like intention to do that. And we need to be mindful because we have these minds and we have this society that's always like go bigger go bigger more 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 always thinking about the next step and so it really is an active practice i think to bring bring yourself back no i don't think i know <laughs> it's an active daily practice to bring yourself back to the little things and be like i'm grateful to have this house i'm grateful to have this body i'm grateful to have my family and friends and i find that it's often those little things that we take for granted that when I actually center myself in them and feel gratitude for them, it actually fills me with the most joy. Even things like I have, I have eyesight, I have hearing. That's not really something you think about in your day to day, but when I actually sit with that and I'm like, damn, I'm really like seeing things. <laughs> I get so grateful for it and that, you know, that I have a body that can, that can run, like I was talking about before, that can, that can move, that has vitality, which again, you, I don't think about that in day to day because I'm like, to-do list, tasks, you know, it's so easy to get swept away in those things and it's nice, like your, your growth in this month or what you're focused on, it's not about like reaching something it's about just coming back to where you are and appreciating all of those little things which is very very sweet and i think you know we talked about kind of testing what when it feels good to zoom in and when it feels good to zoom out and i think when it comes to gratitude like zooming in and looking at all the little things that is going to make you feel really really good and when it comes to frustrations, <laughs> zooming out and being like, this will all be over soon will probably make you feel much better. And it will. 
Whatever obstacles are coming up with what you're working on, you will flow past them and your ancestors are helping you. That is for sure. I think feeling connected to or connecting to your family line um, will really make you feel good and empower you this month. Whether that's like um, feeling connected to your children or thinking about your children or your future generations or connecting to your ancestors, feeling like a part of that bigger wave, I think will, will feel really, really nice. So group number threes, these are all the messages that I have for you. Thank you so much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and of course a wonderful month of July and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. If you enjoy my content and you'd like to find me elsewhere, I'm going to have linked down below my tarot reading Instagram, my personal Instagram, my Patreon, where you can watch tons of exclusive pick a card readings just like this one. And you can also decide on topics for future readings. I will link my music channel, which includes the intro song of this video that is an original song. I'll also have my latest release link down below. And finally, my vlog channel and my merch which features the floating temple that was at the start of this video thank you guys so much for supporting me my channel and anything i do i really really appreciate having you here and i'm sending so much love to you to anyone who appeared in this reading directly or indirectly sending love to your higher self your spirit guides your spiritual team your ancestors your family all of your loved ones both here on earth and in the other realms and i will see you guys in the next one bye bye